Hey everyone, Cody here, and in this video I want to talk to you about some places where you can buy some original abstract art um, online. And I know a lot of the videos on this channel are either about making art or uh, promoting art or, or just the creation process, but I, I mean it's really about abstract art period. And so I figured that I would make this video for people who are going to buy abstract art um, just to give you some a few websites that I would suggest that you check out for buying art if you're looking to buy abstract art online. So um, a couple of quick notes. One, there are some sites that I'm not going to include in this list of five uh, just because uh, either they're too big or they're you know not big enough. So let me explain. There's two sites, I mean the two biggest sites in the world, uh, eBay and Amazon, like biggest sites as, a, as far as marketplaces go. Um, I did not include uh, eBay or Amazon in this list simply because they're just they're, they're so big that it's easy to get lost. If like if you're looking for art, you're also going to be seeing listings for radiators and cat mugs and you know for you know for laundry detergent. I, I don't know, but my point is is that it's kind of distracting to go to a site to buy something like art and then see a bunch of unrelated listings. It's very distracting. I feel like it kind of kills the user experience. It's it's great if you're looking for a deal, but the problem is is that these websites are not specific to art. So because of that, it, it can be distracting. Um, also, the um, the process is just very mechanical because. Someone like because it's through Amazon or eBay, people just like as soon as it's sold, they just ship it out and then it's done. And their policies are pretty same for pretty much all products. So my point is is that they don't treat art any different than they do like office supplies. And the problem that I have with that is that, and I apologize if I look disheveled. I I literally just got up a half hour ago, so <laughs> I just wanted to apologize for that. But um, so you know these sites really the people listing the products most of the time they just treat that product just like anything else it's not like you know they treat expensive one-of-a-kind or limited edition pieces of art any different than they do mugs so my point is is that it's not they're not catered to art so when I go to buy art supplies you know as an artist I don't generally go to Walmart to get my art supplies you know what I mean? I go to an art website or an art store, and that's because I know that I'm I'm probably I'm more likely to find what I'm looking for, and because it's catered to me, they'll you know have like incentives or they'll have um, they'll have more variety of the thing that I'm looking for as opposed to just a general variety that may or may not be what I'm looking for. So <clears throat> I excluded eBay and Amazon. Um, so they are not, I'm not promoting those. You can definitely check on them, but not what I'm promoting. The other thing, the other set of sites that I'm not promoting are just sites that I either found that weren't catered to art specifically, or um, like they weren't big, so I didn't trust them. Um, or if they were print on demand sites, I'm not recommending those just because anyone can do print on demand but I want you know if you're looking to buy art most of the time when you buy art you want an original piece yes some of these sites I'll mention they do prints but I'm not focused on print on demand websites so let's kind of get into the list I apologize for the rant so the first one is Saatchi art now Saatchi art is kind of like a premium gallery when you think of like Saatchi art is kind of the what you would think of of galleries like in New York where it's kind of an upscale feel, and the website feels like an upscale gallery. Um, you know, they have curators, and they have uh, like exhibitions, like on the website. So like they will exhibit, you know, artists. It, it's basically like if you went to a high-end gallery, but you know, like online, right, for artists. So that's essentially what Saatchi Art is like, and a lot of the the artists that are on there, you know, highly represented or you know they, they sell quite a bit um, but anybody can be on Saatchi art the only the only thing that I would advise you against 
that are the only thing that I don't like about Saatchi art, like if you're going to buy from them, is that the cost, you'll probably find that the cost of the pieces is higher on Saatchi art because they have like a markup for the artist. Now it's not a bad thing because you're really paying for like premium service. They have very strict quality uh, guidelines as far as like shipping and stuff. So that's kind of nice. Um, and you know, you will get like the whole art buying experience if you buy through such art. They're also very trusted. They've got a high trust pilot score um, and they've been around for a while. So um, if you're looking to get like a, you know, not a super expensive piece, but something like pretty nice or premium, um, I would check out Sachi Art. The next one is Art Finder. So Art Finder is very similar to Sachi Art like in, in its um, setup, but it's more for like the everyday person. And what I mean by that is that the art on there, you know, there's some expensive pieces too, but it's more kind of down to earth, I guess. Both the, the website itself, but also the art, it seems like it's a, a little more accessible, right? So not so quite, you know, upscale New York uh, gallery, but more like a normal gallery that you would see. But the art, there's still some really great art on there. Um, our, so Art Finder is kind of similar to Saatchi Art. I wouldn't say it's as established, but it's still very, very well established. Uh, a couple of things that I would say, one thing that I noticed about Art Finder that's kind of nice is that you have to apply to be able to sell on there. So that's pretty good because that means that they at least go through the quality of the work that uh, that comes through before it can sell. That's kind of nice. Um, another thing about Art Finder is that they have a couple of tabs at the top of the page for things like sales. So they, you know, they'll promote like sales from, you know, a group of artists. Also they have um, daily finds. So daily finds is where you can go and you can find artists like every day it rotates and you can find new artists that way. And I think that's great for the artists because that helps them get exposure if maybe they're not as popular and, and you know, on the homepage. Um, but as a buyer, you know, it's great because you can find deals, you can support, you know, people who are not as well known. Um, and they, they have quite a bit of artists, probably not as many as Sartre Art, but, but quite a few. I think it was like 100,000 or something like that. So there's quite a few artists on there. Um, so that's, uh, that's Art Finder. It's, I, I kind of like Art Finder. I haven't, honestly, I've never like bought or sold on Art Finder. I have created an account and kind of gone through it, but, uh, uh, just the overall feel of it, it seems pretty good. So, all right, the next one is Etsy. I mean, you've probably heard of Etsy. Etsy's been around for a little while. Um, Etsy, to me, is kind of like the eBay of the craft world, like, hands down. You literally, I mean, there's no auctions, but you literally just buy stuff like, it feels like eBay, like you just buy it now and then you get it, and there's some customization options. But the reason I say that is because it, it's not just art specifically. Etsy sells art, but also vintage and I think like craft supplies or uh, like toys and apparel and stuff like that. So it's like, it's not quite as broad as like eBay or Amazon, but it's it's more than kind of the other two sites that I mentioned because it's it's got, you know, art, but also some other things. So it's not a bad website or anything. I would say that a lot of the art that you'll find on Etsy, like if you're looking to buy art, um, a lot of that art is catered to kind of the uh, the average person. So obviously that's very hard to describe, but the average person meaning like someone who has like a home and they just want a piece for like a specific room or something like that. Not someone who's looking to buy a huge piece or, or tons of pieces or send a ton of money on one piece. But people who are just looking to probably buy a piece for like one room or you know maybe pick up a couple of pieces around the house a lot of the stuff that i find is like it's a lower cost um because it's more like decorative than it is statement um also a lot of the artwork is there there's some great artwork but a lot of it seems just from what i've seen a lot of it's like background art so it's not like art that really stands out very unique and stuff like that it's kind of like stuff that you would just buy just to have in the house to say that you bought art. Um, again, not a bad thing, but just kind of from what I've seen. The next one is Zatista. So Zatista, I'll be honest, I only recently found out about Zatista. I've never used it uh, personally, so you know, you might think, well, why am I even recommending it if I've never used it? Well, 
I did some research. I just I looked at I looked online. I just went through the site. I, I kind of looked it over some of the stuff that they offer, um, things that other people have said. Their their trust pilot score, all of it, it looks good. So, yes, I've never used it, but the site is kind of nice. It's kind of like a combination of of Satyar and Artfinder. Like the the work between them is kind of like that. So. It's like it's got more variety than either of those because there's a few things that you can get on there, but it's not like super, you know, premium or expensive. However, what I do like about Zatista is the the variety. So, like I said, there's there's more available than just like in Art Finder or Such Art. Like they give you some more categories, but it's not so much where it's like Etsy, where it's all this other unrelated stuff like apparel and toys and stuff like that. So it's all art based. That's pretty cool. Um, another thing is the the price range is huge. So it's like fifty to ten thousand or something like that. So you can literally find things of of any value in there. Um, Zatista. My only thing with that is that it's a little smaller, like compared to uh, some of these other sites. Like they don't have as many artists, and their reputation isn't as it's a good reputation, but there isn't much ret reputation. So like their scores they don't have as many reviews and I don't think they've been around as long. So that's my only thing. Um, again, I haven't used them, so I couldn't say a hundred percent, but the site does seem legit and they do have a lot of good options for finding art. So that's why I'm recommending it. Uh, the, the last website that I was going to recommend, I'm not going to recommend this for like every person just because it's not for every person. Uh, so the website is artsy.net. Uh, Artsy.net is really if you're looking to buy a statement piece. So Artsy is kind of like a museum, gallery, auction house, all in one. And because of that, if you go there, the stuff that you're looking at is usually pretty expensive um, from like well-established artists. And those pieces are not cheap. Generally, these are like limited edition prints of people like Banksy, right? Or artists who have a lot of notoriety or publicity or have sold a lot. So these are these are generally pieces from established artists. So I wouldn't say that this is a place to just get like regular art from regular people. This is usually high-end art and you can even bid on art there. So it's very it's very expensive not all of it but a lot of it so just just keep that in mind that 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 one is if you want to buy something that is super unique or, or worth a lot or something like that that's where you would go now the last um, place that I'll mention is really just it's kind of a bonus thing and I didn't want to put it in here but at the same time I, I feel like it should be said um, the last one is, is just buying directly from the artist so if the artist themselves has a website if you can if you like an artist like say you find them somewhere and then you really like their work and you want to buy from them consider buying from their website directly because that artist probably has to pay either a listing fee or a markup uh, if they sell on any of these other websites I mean guaranteed they do so I mean obviously those websites have to make money so if you buy from those other websites you're gonna pay a markup or uh, you know they have to recoup the cost now some are more expensive than others right but my point is is that say for example if you bought from me if you bought from Saatchi art because um, I do have work on there you would have to pay more on such art because um, because they have to recoup that cost and I have to recoup that cost so you're gonna pay more on there than you would if you just bought it directly from my website because if it's on my site then I don't have to mark that up to make up that cost um, second you know if I want to put something on sale literally I just click a button and then apply a coupon and then I can not only not mark the price up but if I wanted to get rid of a piece I can lower sell it even lower and still make a profit because I'm not paying a middleman okay so if you can buy directly from the artist, either from their website or some, I know a lot of artists that are just on social media now where they only have like a Facebook page or an Instagram page and they just sell through PayPal. If you trust doing that, I would suggest that you do that for the artist. If you find an artist somewhere, I'm not trying to take away from these websites that I mentioned, 
but if you really want to support the artist and you know you want to try to give them as much as possible just buy it directly from them because that you know all that money is going to go to them and then they can deal with you know paying taxes and the expenses and all that but you're not going through a middleman so you're not paying extra for that same piece now if you're not comfortable buying directly from the person maybe you don't know them or you know maybe they don't have a lot of reputation on their site like testimonials or you can't find a whole lot of reviews on them that's understandable um, so at that point I mean just buy through whatever website you found them on and I'm sure that that you know that sale is gonna help that artist and you know any sale is better than no sale so um, that's pretty much it guys I, I just wanted to kind of put this out there for like I said for people who are looking to buy art online because I, I just love talking about art and I think that that might be helpful for other people there is a blog version of this in the in the links or the description area so if you want to see a blog version of this you can read that I'll put the links to the sites um, listed in the little description below um, but that's pretty much it guys I really hope that this video was helpful for you and I hope that you guys have an awesome rest of your day if you like it please like rate share subscribe um, or visit my site for original works, but that's it. Take care guys